After creating the element equation, the question comes to be uh, what happens for elements that are connected at certain nodes? What's happening in the whole domain? How can we use those element equations to present the behavior of uh, the whole domain under that uh, differential equation? Uh, so uh, we will uh, assemble, uh, the, we will uh, talk about what's called assembly, assembling the uh, global uh, equation uh, and uh, how to apply the boundary conditions in order to be able to solve for the uh, unknown values of uh, the function inside the domain. Okay. So let's just remember that uh, uh, we obtained the element equation uh, that looked like this uh, from the second order differential equation uh, that describes the heat transfer uh, in a conducting material and uh, uh, we can just uh, rewrite this as a matrix k1 k2 k3 k4 or stiffness matrix multiplied by u1 over u2 equals to f1 and f2 it's just a compact presentation of uh, the, the, those two equations. Remember that C and H and A are uh, just constants, so uh, these are all constant values that can be added as numbers to uh, present uh, the, uh, the element matrix uh, in this form. Okay, now uh, if we have two adjacent elements, element number one and element number two, each has its uh, U1 uh, and U2, uh, in the second element, we will call them U2 and U3. Uh, the first element is presented by uh, this equation, and the second element is presented by this equation. Uh, notice, of course, that they look the same, uh, just simply because they are uh, derived from the same differential equation, and we even assume that we have uh, the same uh, element length, x2 minus x1. Uh, notice here that U1 of the first element is, uh, is presented in this um, uh, equation, while uh, U2 of the first element and U1 of the second element should be the same. They are here. Uh, there cannot be a, 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 an abrupt change in the value of U from uh, the same point on one element to the same point on the other element. So they have to be equal. Uh, finally, uh, U3 is the second uh, U, the second value of U for the second uh, element. Uh, here, uh, we are going to uh, present this without proof. We will just add up the equation that contains the uh, equal values of u. So this is, we were going to add the second equation of the first element to the first equation of the second element. If you do this and try to present it all in uh, one matrix form, you will get uh, the first equation. Here you are, k1, k2 of the first element, uh, k1 multiplied by u1 uh, and k2 multiplied by u2 equals f1. There it is, the first line. And here, reappears our boundary uh, our boundary uh, value or q1 that uh, came from uh, the part we neglected earlier uh, the boundary term that came up from the integration uh, uh, integration by um, uh, sorry uh, integration by parts and the third equation here, or the, uh, the fourth, uh, the last equation here, is K3 times U1 of the second element, which is U2, and K4 multiplied by U2 of the second element, which is U3. Here you are, you get the third uh, or the last equation. And in the middle, if you add both uh, terms, you will get K3, 1, uh, K4, 1, K1, 2, K2, 2. Uh, and multi multiplied by the three uh, constants, u1, u2, u3, equals f2 plus q2. Uh, this is what we call the assembled uh, matrix. This matrix here presents the behavior of the function u 
in all the domain from point one to point three. And notice that when we did this addition of equations, we didn't really need to go through adding each and every two. It's just that in the three by three global matrix, we put the first element in the first place here. There it is, this square. Then we augmented it by adding the second element in the starting the second U. So uh, here, this corresponds to U1, this corresponds to U2, and this corresponds to U3. So we just added this. The intersection is only in this term, where U2 appears in both uh, equations. Otherwise, K2, uh, K2, 2 is put as it is which is multiplied by U3, and K31 is multiply, is put as it is. Uh, it's coming from uh, the first uh, element. Uh, this procedure is actually a straightforward procedure. You can repeat it for any number of elements uh, that uh, you use in the domain. So if you have 10 of them, you have uh, 10 elements, then you have 11 points. So the global matrix will be an 11 by 11 matrix. In the first two by two, you just substitute directly the first element, then start adding up the second element and the third element and the fourth element and so on until you uh, finish all the elements.